All right, welcome back to SF Vortex. We've made it down to the war room, and joining me today, three war room veterans. Mark Altman is here. He's the editor-in-chief of Sci-Fi Universe magazine. Where's my subscription, by the way? Also, Michael Logan is here, sci-fi critic from TV Guide. And no stranger to controversy, Mr. Eric Wallace, screenwriter and freelance sci-fi critic. Guys, welcome. Nice to have you. Thanks, Let's get right you. to it. Michael Logan, mm -hmm. Nicolas Cage as Superman, the next Man of Steel. What do you think? Bad idea. Horrible. I can't even imagine a worse choice, actually. <laughs> you know what? I want to know, know what's in the water at Warner Brothers. I mean, Nicolas Cage? Who was the rocket scientist Maybe who came up with this producing. idea? You don't know what's happening there. Mark, what do you think, Eric? thinking about box office overseas receipts from The Rock. That's why he's cast. I have to agree, though. I'm thinking about his hairline. Yeah, I know. But Nicolas Cage doesn't work because he brings too much baggage from his past films, I think. He's a weird actor. He's a good actor, but he's known for offbeat, strange roles. Superman is a hero. He's a paragon. He's a figure of justice and right. truth. You cannot have someone that strange and off-center, I think, for Superman. And speaking of Super strange, Man. It's this close that Tim Burton is going to direct the film. What's with that? <laughs> Tim Burton, the, you know, the king of weird and odd and, and Mars Attacks, lest we, you know, mention that. It's the same What's problem. he doing with Superman? Superman, it, it's really a story of an immigrant assimilating, okay? Let's deal with the subtext of Superman and let's deal with action. Tim Burton can't direct action. But why do we even need another Superman to begin with? Are we doing this because we can do all these special effects in the 90s that we couldn't do in the 70s? Is that the only point to remake this thing yet again? We're doing it because Hollywood has run out of real stories to write and they need comic book heroes. Right. Yeah. Getting back to Nicholas Cage does, you know, like the past Supermans. George Reeves, you got uh, you know, Dean Cain, who's fabulous. He's terrific on TV. Kirk Allen. And don't worry about the hair, by the way. They can fix that in post. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what? CGI. We can fix anything with CGI. Absolutely. Does, well, does no. Nicholas Cage fit that mold that the, in the costume? Can we imagine him in that costume, Mark? I can't even imagine no. him as Clark Kent. I can't imagine him in the costume. You know, I mean, that, this is not who I see as Superman. You know who would be a great Superman? Why don't you go ahead and tell okay. us? Tell you us. Know what? I, I just going to tell you. I think Rodney Rowland from Space. He could play the, the, the sort of hunky kind of, uh, hmm. uh, you know, Superman and also Clark Kent. I, you know, or you want to go another way? Denzel Washington. <laughs> Nice. No, there there we go. I like that. I want to see him. I like that, I like that choice. I want to see Superman like I see him in the comics book. I, you know, in the comic strips. I don't want him to look different. I want him to look like Christopher Reeve. That's Who why, why that Superman, works Michael? so well. Who's and I choice? also think that you need an unknown. I, really there's no actor that I would say he should have the part because I think the best thing that can happen with something like this is to discover somebody new. You want my and choice? The, like they yeah, Christopher please. Do you want my choice, folks? Bring that camera here on a nice close-up. How about Dennis Rodman as Superman? What do you think? <laughs> I like Denzel. Eric Wallace, who do you like? I like... I like his, I like yours, but I say Matthew McConaughey. Oh, interesting. Because Never he's, of he's that. got the all-American look. Right. He's an A-level star who's going to bring in the money in the box office, but he's not well enough known to have a whole bunch of baggage. Mm -hmm. I think he's got the perfect all-American look. That's my choice. Yeah. More importantly, far. Lois Lane. <laughs> who are you going with there? Jennifer Lopez or Sandra Bullock. I like it. I like your choice there. What about now? Uh, let's go to a viewer letter. Should we do that? They're always a lot of fun. Sure. Let's good. go to our first one. It's from Patricia, and she writes of Nicolas Cage. Nick Cage, Nick Cage, where is she, his best friend? Nick Cage is a good actor, but he's not Superman. Dean Cain is the only choice for Superman. I don't know about that. Did, what do well, you think? Did we hear about Superman's ratings over the weekend? Yeah, right. They, they're they're horrible. Got, uh, Six people yeah. Yeah. Go to watching see them for free. Dean We're Kane. not going to pay. That's right. I, I know. Look, I think Dean Cain is wonderful, but you know what? People aren't going to go see something they can get for free you know, at a movie theater. Yeah. And, and I think it's great. But let's reinvent it. We want a, a new approach and, and something fresh. Well, and Dean Cain is not fresh. Uh, Tim Burton sounds like a new approach. I don't know. Uh, that's, uh, I don't know that we want that. It's too new that, approach. Why don't we have could, David Leach direct it? We can sit mean, here. We can, on, we can guess idea. what Tim Burton's going to do. We have no clue what these people are thinking I about I say with bring this in do David Cronenberg. End of subject. Let me move Let me start. How about... James Spader is Superman. What different way to go, but it's something to think about. What about Lois and Clark? What can save this show? This show struggling. It's too it's late. Got that it's brutal late, Saturday yeah. night time slot. Is it over here? It's fallen into the same trap that Moonlighting did. Once they started to sleep with each, sleep with each other, everybody got in, uninterested mm. in it. Just it needs to be dropped. Right. I'm, but I'm still but the interesting thing is, is that they have a 22 episode guarantee for next season. So right. uh, you it's know, interesting if, quagmire if somebody doesn't create. buy it's somebody out of that deal, it's going to come out and they want to cross pollinate. It's money. They have a 22 there. for next yeah. season as that, well. It, That's why well, I like Warner. Yeah, to get it renewed, to get it renewed for this season. They had to commit yeah. to a 22 episode commitment mm -hmm. for next season, and now they're stuck with this albatross on their schedule because the ratings are just not there. And and it's a shame because it's still, uh, you know, I 
think a good entertaining show. Well, they can always juggle that. They can take that money that they because it's Warner Brothers, it's ABC. They could make another deal with another show and pay some people right, off, and sure. they don't have to air this. Mark, thing. what about the mm -hmm. rumor of taking off Lois and Clark and replacing it with SF Vortex? Have you heard anything? <laughs> I think it's a I great idea. It's going around on the internet. Come back. There's <laughs> lots more to talk about. We're right back, folks. See you in a minute. All right, welcome back to the show that inspired Tiger Woods to a Masters Championship. We are SF Vortex. Guys, before we move on to my next subject, real quick, congratulations, since on the topic of Superman, congratulations to Christopher Reeve. This week, yeah. a star yeah. on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Right. How about right. Absolutely. Very well, impressive. Well, you know, well deserved. Absolutely. Okay, my next topic, X-Files, moving to the big screen this summer. What do you think, Mark Altman? I gotta, Season finale, they're going to put it on the know, big screen. I, I think what's wonderful is you can do things which are a little more scary, a little more sexy than they've been on television. But uh, I think it's a little strange that they're going to be doing this cliffhanger, uh, resolving it in the movie. It's going to be a huge success no matter what. But I'd like to see a standalone movie, honestly. I don't think it makes any difference. I think, first of all, there's enough X-Files fanatics. They're going to go out and see this film. It's going to make its money. And it, they would enjoy a cliffhanger, as would I. It opens up story possibilities. We can do much more. Bring that scope out. Make something really exciting happen at the end of the season. And then go with it. Plus, this go is places you can never go is about before. doing and seeing things we 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 never see before. Right. I think the fans would be so excited to see. Can this work? Can exactly. you do a series? X Files. And then go to the movies and see the you know see the uh, you know, the I keep thinking of finale. Batman 1966 with Adam West, and I'm just you know wondering, are we cashing in? Maybe we should wait until the show's over before we do a movie. Is the show a big enough hit worldwide? Well, and that's the thing. Why does it stand alone? There are a lot of people who don't watch X Files. Right. They want to see something that's original. It's not tied into the mythology of the series. But, but give Chris Carter credit. This is a big deal. They're going to do it. This is not going to be some you know fly-by-night thing that they're going to throw together. It's going to be well thought out. It's going to be probably made as accessible for the non-X-Files yeah, viewer as possible. It's very gimmicky. And get everybody You've into it. You've got to trust that these writers know what they're doing and that they can recap in the first 20 minutes of the movie anything that needs to happen that people who don't watch the show will know. And if these two stars are in fact leaving and they're both making rumbling noises about Leaving? it. Leaving? What are you very, saying, very, Michael Logan? Is this have, a scoop? Great, <laughs> what are we, hard copies? They have, they have great careers ahead of them. Right. This could be the last time we uh, you know, we see these people. It could be a huge event for that reason. Don't alone. worry. If they leave, Fox will put on X-Files, the next generation. It'll be like Mission Impossible. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, uh, exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, the X-Files is going to be with us for a long time. Time. I think they need the mystery. And we'll watch less and less. Roger? Roger? I was talking to the biggest X-Files fan in the universe. His name is Mark Nogue. He lives out in Kenosha. Park, California, somewhere out there, and okay. he was saying that he's a little upset because here he is, a fan, he's never missed an episode, and now to see the finale, he's going to have to pay eight bucks to go see it. Save your allowance. I mean, come on, that's not the problem. I mean, shell out the money, or wait till it comes out on video. I think, you know, we'll you be up for a year and a half. Save I mean, your allowance. <laughs> Do you have his address? I'll give him the eight bucks. I'll send him a money order. It's right, not that right, big of a deal. So Mark Nogue, you can get the money on the way. I mean, that's not the problem. Okay, I mean, how about this? <laughs> now, think about this for a minute. Okay. X-Files, Millennium, both Chris Carter shows. Sure. Stay with me on this. Right. I'm making a good point, I think. Okay. Fox Mulder, Frank Black, both paranormal experts. Somewhere along the line, these two guys should be intertwining somewhere. Mark, what right. do you think? You know, Millennium starts... Who cares? Well, that, that sums up how I feel. I mean, <laughs> frankly, I mean, I just don't think that Frank Black and, you know, he, uh, Millennium's actually gotten much better, but I'm not really interested in seeing those two franchises combined. Uh, Michael Logan, are you me. interested? Bad idea, Raj. Oh, come on. No I thought way. it was terrific. No way. I want to see Scooby-Doo <laughs> in the X-Files. That I would pay. Directed by Tim Burton. That I would pay. <laughs> Starring Nicholas Cage Eric, what do you think of my idea? I think it's terrific. Uh, I got to agree with them. <laughs> no? Yeah. You know, you're not, not going happening. for it. Not happening. All right, well, anyway, that, I guess that wraps up this segment. <laughs> I gotta go over the <laughs> We're out of here. <laughs> On that note, folks, there's lots more in the war room. Don't go anywhere, including you, Mark Nogi in Canoga Park. See you in a minute. Money on the way. <laughs> Money on the way. Welcome back to SF Vortex. We're still here with Michael Logan, Mark Altman, Eric Wallace. How about some viewer mail, guys? Oh, that'd One be great. more. Here Delightful. we go. D Webb asks I heard last week that Liam Neeson might be in the new Star Wars movie. Is this true? You know, we've heard the same rumors along with 
16-year-old Natalie Portman evidently is in discussions to co-star as Princess Leia's mother. Excellent. What do you think, Mark Altman? Well, I heard uh, Nicolas Cage was up for a role. No, 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 no <laughs> honest, actually, actually, I'll tell you some interesting. Liam Neeson, this is true, he's very close to signing a deal to be in the new Star Wars movie. But more interesting, Sam Jackson right now is being talked to about hey, appearing Sam in uh, Jackson. Star Wars. And uh, can play Lando's father. Natalie Portman. And, and also, <laughs> <laughs> also, Ewan McGregor from uh, Train Spotting, a wonderful young actor, is up for a very important role. Michael, uh, does this film. surprise you? These secrets coming yeah, out. Yeah, George, Lucas, George Lucas, you know, is, is incredibly secretive. So why is all this coming out on this picture? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. You why. why? But no, it's not. He's trying to keep it a secret. But there are people like me getting on the phone to our writers in London, saying, "You gotta find something out. Stop the presses." Eric. Liam Neeson, Ewan McGregor, Natalie Portman. You know, people want to know. Boba mm. Fett. They want to know. He's in the new. As long uh, as he gets it right the first time, it doesn't put out special editions of these things. Yeah, right. One year afterwards. I always meant to include. Big fan uh, of the sequels, yes. there, Eric. Big fan of the sequels, but get it right the first time, and then whatever you come out with, let it lie. Everything's very exciting. Let's go together. Though. You want to? No. Okay. Yeah. You'll treat? send a ticket yeah. to that. I'll give you the eight well. dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the time we have for money folks. today. I want to thank Mark Altman, Michael <laughs> Logan, and Eric Wallace. You guys thought this war room was heated? Wait till next week. We have J. Michael Straczynski, the creator, executive producer, and writer of Babylon 5. He'll be joined with the always controversial Harlan Ellison to debate the most influential writing in science fiction entertainment. Be sure to send us your comments, folks, at sfvortex at sci-fi.com. Until next week, this is Roger, out.